Hello everybody, so today we're going to take a look back over all my old previous PC builds, why I chose them, how they performed and what upgrades I did. This should be fun. Right, welcome back everybody. Right, before I start showing you all these old PC builds, just quick background. I've always loved technology, gadgets, gizmos, gaming and so on. I think my first experience of playing games was on my brother's old Spectrum 48K. And then after that I started getting my own stuff, Commodore 64, Amiga, all the games consoles, you name it. Eventually bought myself a packaged PC and what happened was that the, uh, the motherboard basically packed in on it. Took it somewhere to get it um, sorted, and they gave me an, a, a ridiculous price. Honestly, I think it was it was almost half the price of the PC, but I, which well, I actually paid for a PC. So I decided to actually try fix it myself. Got a motherboard for like next to nothing, replaced it, and it worked fine, you know. And I was happy with what I'd done. And then after that, I thought to myself, I'm going to start trying to build PCs. Built my very first PC, which you'll see in a minute. No laughing at the back. And then after that, it became a bit of a hobby. Guys were coming to me in work asking if I would help them out and then what I was basically doing was building PCs for guys. They were coming to me with a budget, I was telling them what to go and buy. They gave me the parts, I put it together and it saved saved them a lot of money. I wasn't taking any money for it at all, you know, I was just doing it as a hobby. Every now and then somebody gave me a bit of money or whatever, but I always had that old caveat that if anything fails, you can't come back to me, there's no guarantee, but eh, touch wood. None of them ever came back and everybody was happy. So. We'll crack on and I'll show you the very first one. And this was a... <laughs> Look at this thing. Is that not just a thing of beauty? Look at that. <laughs> I believe uh, this was the, the Raid Max uh, 278WSP case, I think it was. I probably bought this thing for about 30 quid or something like that from one of my local computer shops. And you can see uh, it's got these kind of crazy bubble lights at the front. The bubbles didn't move, they were just air bubbles that were set into the case. But they went from a kind of blue down to a pink, and you'll see that better in a minute. A good old CRT monitor, eh? You used to do your backing lifting those things on the tables. There seemed to be something at the time when I bought this, everybody was like fascinated with this monitor, and I can't for the life of me remember what it was. 1600 by 1200 resolution, I think it was, but it might have been the, the megahertz and flicker rate or something that was on it that might have been higher. Um, but it seemed to be a popular monitor, and I went out and bought one. And God knows what that thing is, that's just a cheapest chips keyboard. Um, but it was it was what I had to get me started. Um, so, <laughs> again, I want to apologize about absolutely shocking pictures. This was years and years ago, we didn't have decent cameras. It was probably a bog standard cheap camera I was using at the time, so the, the, some of the photos from the early days are absolutely awful, but you can see the kind of light effect it was on, on the bubbles. I think that was a really basic Microsoft mouse. Um, ah, God knows, honestly, God knows what that keyboard is, it really is. It's, it's probably about £20 piece of crap, but done me. <laughs> and there you go, the wee side view of it with lights and everything inside it, that was, that was the start of the, the modern journey for me. This was back in the day when it wasn't RGB strips or addressable strips, it was just these cold cathode tubes that, that you bought and you were only stuck with a one colour, but that was me, that was my first first case, first PC build. Again, I need to apologise because um, for the life of me, I can't remember what half of the stuff that was in this, motherboards, memory and so on, graphics cards, but all I can say was when I first started uh, building PC, I was a, I was basically an Intel fanboy. Wouldn't touch AMD stuff with a barge pole. Um, don't know why, because I'm totally the other way now. But I uh, was all, it was all, it was all Intel stuff. So it would, it would definitely be an Intel processor in there. And then <laughs> that was my next setup. I actually managed to get myself a desk, same monitor as you can see is on the desk, and that was my first flat screen monitor. I think that was only like 14 inch or something like that, that monitor. Um, it's 720p if I can remember it as well, but I think out of all my mates I was the first one to get a TFT monitor, sorry. Yeah, a TFT we would, have, we would have called it at the stage. Um, and I loved it. Um, but imagine trying to play something like that now. No chance, it's far, far too small. We cheap Logitech webcam at the time. Uh, 
don't know why I've got that because I don't ever think I talked to anybody in webcam. Try to think what we used back then, um, Messenger and Bebo and things like that. So God knows why that was there. Thermaltake keyboard that came with the case, and I think that was an MX. No, in fact, I think I still see Microsoft mouse as I had before. Office chair I must have nicked from work. We printed in a the corner there, uh, and you can see. I'd actually purchased myself some 5.1 speakers. There's a speaker up in the corner, up there, and the other corner over here. A little centre speaker there, sub, and then I've got two speakers behind me. But this was my first real decent case, um, and that was the Thermaltake Zazer 3. I think that's how you pronounce it, Zazer 3. Um, cracking big case, tons and tons of space in it. Um, I can't remember how many drives it held, it was, it was huge. Excuse me. I had a nice little feature as well with the, the kind of LED lit front the Thermaltake logo at the front and a fan controller unit, which was the first time I kind of ever had a, a fan control unit in my case. But I ended up, I swapped this out for something a little more fancy and you'll see that soon. Um, but yeah, that was my first big decent case. Um, there's a wee close up of it with the, the different fan controller in it. And I think the fan controller was the Thermaltake Hard Cano 12. Getting fancy now with all the stuff I'm adding in eh? Some LED lights and stuff on the inside of the case as well. Um, keys to keep the bloody thing locked. Don't know why. Uh, they were always hanging out the front of it. And there's a kind of dodgy, out of focus picture of my much to be desired <laughs> god awful cable management inside. So that was something I didn't even bother about at the time, didn't think about cable management, all I was concerned about was the thing was up and running and they'd done a job, played games or whatever and that's where, that, uh, that's where we're at with that one. And now on to my next little upgrade I had when I was in, this is, sorry I should also say this is my first house me and my wife bought so um, it was only two bedroom and I had this set up in the, the smaller bedroom. Um, right, obviously a new desk, glass top table. I like the look of it, but see nowadays when touch a glass top table, never ever had any problems with this, nothing ever happened to it, but <laughs> at one stage I actually put my PC on the top of it and I don't know what I was thinking because it was on the overhanging edge and it could have easily shattered, it was a stupid thing to do, but I was young at the time, didn't really think about it. But what upgrades have we got here? We've got a new case as well, that's another one from Thermaltake, that was a Thermal Thermaltake and Elf case. Um, similar size to the previous one, but a little nicer. Same again, that lit up at the front. Had a little um, LED glowing ring at the front here as well, and some lights and stuff on the inside. I think I've got a picture of that as well. Uh, what else have we got dotted around the case? I'm trying to remember what phone that was. Old flip phone. I think it was maybe was it a Nokia or a Motorola. I can't remember, but I love those old phones. You can't beat the old phones, to be honest with you. I did a little lava lamp just because I could. And on my desk there you also see a mini disc player. Now, I don't know what it is about mini discs. I, I, I kind of think they died off too soon. I thought it was, they were great technology and I actually really miss not having a mini disc player. It was a great wee thing. I think just in the corner there behind the chair I actually had a mini disc player and recorder as well where I used to kind of burn all my DV, sorry, burn all my MP3s to the mini discs. I absolutely loved that little thing. It was a great thing. I uh, don't think anything else has changed there. That's a different keyboard from Microsoft, and I think that is the Logitech MX 1000 gaming mouse or laser mouse. I think it's the first laser mouse that came out. Oh, and obviously, there's a new monitor there as well. Some LG again, was it 14 or 15 inch thing? But, yep, uh, and there's a kind of close up of the case. It's a cracking big case to be honest with you. Um, it's not a lot of bad things I can really say about that case. Maybe see, yeah, it's a better picture of all that up. It actually looked apart at night with the, the blue LED lights. Couldn't change them, that was it. You bought it and it was just the one set colour. Nothing fancy there. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, I eventually didn't like the case being on the floor because of the, the carpet and the, the dust getting sucked up into it. Decided to get something a little bit smaller as well, and I got the what you're seeing here is a Cooler Master Cavalier 3. Um, I think I'd done a bit of shopping about at the time, and this is the one that kind of caught my eye. Get drive base, the old 5.2 drive base behind this hidden door, which was nice. But as you can see, 
I had this thing sitting on top of a glass table with all that weight on it, on the overhang. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm amazed that never shattered or broke, but I held up. And <laughs> another old school Nokia phone. You could have probably bounced that off the four walls in that room and it would have never broke. Don't build them like that any day anymore. So, here's a picture of the inside of this case. Same again. Cable management's an absolute bomb scare, but <laughs> we did what they had to do. I tried it. Is that, is that a, an ABIT motherboard? Can't remember ever having that motherboard. Um, does that company still exist? I don't know. No. Can't remember having that, but you can see as my the years go on, I start paying a wee bit more attention to how the inside of the case looks. But what we, what was quite funny about that is the the cold cathode blue light that was in this seemed to have a kind of glow in the deck, a glow in the dark effect to all the Molex plugs that came in the power power supply. Um, I can't remember if I bought that intentionally, knowing that would happen, or whether it was just something I discovered. It's once I turned the lights on, but. Uh, and there's a wee picture of uh, <laughs> my setup at night. Again, a different mouse I decided to get, uh, sorry, different keyboard. I uh, decided to get just a cheap keyboard that had LED lighting in it um, for when I was gaming at night. You see the lava lamp up there in the corner as well. And uh, my desktop with a lovely picture of Julian Blalock. If you, if you don't know who she is, she was in a TV show called Star Trek Enterprise years ago. Don't know if she's in anything else. And I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't get away with that on my laptop or any, sorry, on my PC screens just now without getting a slap in the head. So, yeah, we'll quickly move on to that. In fact, um, that's the end of all the, the setups I had in that particular house. Um, what happened after that was my wife got pregnant. Uh, in fact, I'm lying, it wasn't in that particular house. It was just in that particular room. But yeah, my wife got pregnant. I had, I had to basically move everything out of that, that room, get rid of the desk, get rid of a lot of the other crap, and I moved all the stuff um, into her bedroom. Um, was that right? Did I move into her bedroom? Let's see what the pictures are here. I'm oh, sorry, still other pictures. Apologies about that. There's other pictures. I moved the PC over to the other side of that room, um, but nothing's really changed there. Just all the same stuff. What I did do yeah, was move that PC inside that desk. Um, probably a bad move. I would never ever do that now. Just all it does is just chokes off the airflow of the case. Not that there was much airflow in these cases anyway. I mean, I think there was only one exhaust fan at the back of that and one intake fan in the front and that, and that was it. But... I, th I do remember when I had it inside this thing, uh, the, the temperature went up by a few degrees. Um, so, yeah, at a later stage I ended up taking it back out again, but I looked apart in there. Um, but it was weird. Nice looking case. Um, inside a PC, in, or inside a PC desk. And I used to shut this door and you'd never ever see it, so it was, it was kind of pointless. But it did clear up floor room space, uh, or floor space I should say, in the bedroom. But... You can also see as well, I nicked the fan control unit from the previous case and added onto that as well. So that was that. Uh, just the same old pictures. So as I mentioned, we had a baby coming along, so that room got turned into a nursery. And uh, I ended up moving all my stuff through into our bedroom and found a, a space in our bedroom. And it was just, it was pointless, it was useless. Tiny, tiny wee desk that I've got to try and set everything on. Ended up buying a different monitor uh, that also acted as a TV, so we can watch the TV in the bedroom as well. Uh, what else did I add to it? I don't think I really added anything to it. Everything's the same as what you've seen before. Because of the lack of space in this desk, I ended up moving all the PC stuff, all the equipment, back inside this Candalf case, so I could set it to the side of the desk. Um, there's a Microsoft Sidewinder joystick sitting there. I think it was called a Sidewinder. I absolutely loved that thing for playing flight sims and stuff like that, or space uh, space games or whatever. Um, it's a fantastic joystick. Uh, good old Xbox. The original Xbox. Um, and a, a Skybox. I ended up had to clear all this up. Basically too much crap in there. And again, as, as I mentioned, I moved stuff away and cleared up some space. Again, 
use this case, put everything back into this case and put it under the desk only just to clear the floor space so we could get around the bedroom a bit easier without bumping into that Mahusov PC case that was sitting in the corner there but nothing's really changed there um, just a case again can't see where the controller is up at top there um, but yeah that, that, that was that, that joystick I was mentioning a brilliant joystick no way to hide the cables, it's just a mess. I mean, I tried tidying some of the cables up using like plastic trunking, but you can see from the mirror there the, the absolute mess of the cables at the back of the PC. Eh, hey, what else? Right, I know I'm talking about PC setups, but I thought I would add this in. This is a bog standard old, you know, big chunky square telly, but this was different. All your old tellies back, back then used to be 4 by 3 ratio. This is one of the very first widescreen TVs that was like that, a big bulky chunky thing. Um I just thought I would share that with you if, if any you ever had a widescreen TV like that. Um you can let me know down in the comments but um that's a great big TV. I had a sound system as part of the the DVD player which you can see there. But this thing actually had a built in couple of speakers that came with the TV and then it also had a a speaker built into the front of the TV as well, so it's quite good on the sound front as well. And there you go, it just shows you how old this picture is, an old VHS video recorder down the bottom as well. But eventually I got rid of that TV, and I got myself my first flat screen TV, old Philips TV. And this is when I started getting a wee bit adventurous about trying to hide cables and stuff like that. That TV eventually ended up on the wall. Because of the house that we had, it had big cavity walls. And actually drilled a hole directly behind the TV, dropped the cables down inside the cavity, and then out a second hole down the bottom into the, the the TV cabinet, and you couldn't see any of the cables. So that was the beginning of my cable management. And I think yeah, I think that's basically the end of the photos for that house. Um, as I, as I mentioned, my my, my baby boy, my oldest boy, was coming along at the time. We stayed there for a few years. Um, and then we decided to move, and that's when uh, our second boy came along as well. But my whole focus on PC gaming kind of went out the window because of the kids and stuff like that. I never really had the time for it, so I decided to go down a different route, and I created a, a home theater PC. Um, you'll see that on the screen just now. Bought this big, hideous, ugly. TV cabinet thing for our living room, it was just a monstrosity, it took up the whole entire wall. Sat our plasma TV on it, um, and then I decided at a stage I kind of wanted to build a, a home theatre PC, identified that I could maybe get something a bit smaller and maybe sit in one of these openings here. Um, and this is what you're seeing in the screen right now. Uh, that case is the, the Antec NSK2480, a home theatre PC case it was. But you can see I pretty much crammed everything I had in there at the time. PlayStation 3, old Xbox 360. There was a, an HDMI switching unit and everything I had in there. Um, and I decided to build up a like a Plex server using this PC. You could play games and stuff on it, but it wasn't really about the games. It was more about movies and stuff like that. I bought myself a gaming laptop at that point, and all my games were getting played on the gaming laptop or or the PlayStation Three or the Xbox on that on that TV. But PC actual actual PC gaming kind of took a back a back seat at this point. But uh, aye, so that was the beginning of me putting a home theater PC together. Another thing as well, this TV cabinet, this TV unit, I should say, um, that was a plasma TV. If you've if you're of a similar age to me or if you've ever had a plasma TV, you'll know the weight of these things. This TV unit was never ever meant to take the weight of this plasma TV. I've done it, risking it, and again, touch wood, it never ever fell. Didn't ever feel like it was going to fall, it was quite solid, but uh, again, it's one of those things. I kind of looked back at it and thought, why did they do that? It's absolutely utter madness. Um, And another wee change here to my home theatre PC setup. That was my first audio receiver or AV receiver that I, I purchased in Onkyo. Um, and I've actually, to this day, still got the same speakers. 
The actual way we receive it itself changed a few times, but I still have those speakers and they work, they work great for me. The only other addition to that setup was uh, this thing here, which you can see is a Silverstone 5.25 basically a little LCD readout thing, um, a control panel kind of thing, you put software onto the home theatre PC and it kind of fed back information, temperatures, news, email information, whatever. There was no remote or anything for it, it just purely was a an LED readout if I can remember right. But So that was, that was the home theatre PC beginning to build up. Um, kind of close up picture of the AV receiver. A wee kind of closer up picture of the actual case, and again this thing because it was jammed inside this this unit, the the temperatures weren't great on it. Um, I think if I remember right, there was one fan at the back and maybe a, was it an additional fan at the top as well, but it was hardly anywhere for the for the temperature to go. But in saying that, it was only used as a home theater PC, so it didn't really get overly hot. But again, it's not something I would I would ever do nowadays. Uh, and then because of my worries about, about that telly falling off that bloody unit or the, the unit snapping I decided to buy a new TV unit from you guessed it Ikea you could have probably told that just by looking at it um, aye and the only reason we bought this one was this thing had metal bars going up the sides of it and one across the back of it and it was it was built to take TVs that are heavier and again decided to do a wee bit of kind of cable management and drilled some holes into the thing and pushed the cables for the speakers down at the back of it which made it all kind of nice and tidy. Also bought myself some LED lights that uh, those were from IKEA, they just kind of blue tacked onto the back of the TV and again fed the cables down the hole into the back of the TV as well. Still got his lights to this day as well, my son's got them in the back of his, his TV but uh, I kind of felt a shame again to kind of hide everything behind frosted glass doors. I think a lot of times if you've got all this kind of equipment and stuff you should really be showing it off but it ended up behind these frosted glass doors just because of this unit. And uh, a couple of close-ups of some of the stuff I had. Obviously I had more shelves in the previous one so I could get away with putting a DVD, it was, well not a DVD player but the, the PlayStation inside here. Previous TV unit I had it was sitting on the floor beside it. So I kept a wee bit more, more dust free being in sight. And there's a wee quick picture of the lights on at night. You can change them to blue. That was, that was, I think that was the first kind of LED lights I had. You could actually physically change the colours on them. So that was quite nice at night, sitting watching movies. And here's some pictures of what was in this case. Uh, so you can see the graphics card is a, an EAH 3650 Radian thing. Nothing special at all. It was only put in there purely for watching movies and stuff like that and uh, I think this was low profile, didn't take up too much space because the actual case itself is because of the height of it, it needed to be a kind of low profile card if I remember right but again, couldn't honestly tell you what was inside this thing um, well there you go, you can actually see the, the motherboard that was in there, that's a gigabyte motherboard and as I said earlier on I was a, an Intel fanboy so it would have probably been a Pentium <laughs> It was a Pentium 2, I think it was Pentium Core, I can't remember, Pentium 2 Core Duo, whatever you want to call it, was in this thing, but didn't have to be anything special to, to, to run movies. Another nice blurry photo for you, and that was a kind of case finished, built prior to just putting that little LED control panel at the front. And this is where it got a wee bit interesting, it started getting a wee bit more adventurous. I wanted my TV up on the wall um, and what I actually did was uh, I raggled all the wall and I'll show you exactly how i done that in a different picture. So when we first bought this house this was just a recess in the corner of the, the living room. Um, there was nothing in there and you got a joiner out. He done all the kind of woodwork, put the shelves in, put the doors on and so on, doors down the bottom. I personally raggled the wall or raggled a channel down from the back of the telly down to the behind the fireplace, uh, put in some electrical ducting in there and then plastered it all back up before wall wallpaper and stuff. The same as the speakers, there was some uh, the walls were raggled with some uh, electrical ducting or cable tube, whatever you want to call it. 
inside the walls where I could feed the speaker cables through. We came into the back of this the hole in the wall, down the back of the TV, down behind this fireplace. And the fireplace we bought, it, although it looks solid, it's actually hollow inside that was all hollow, so it actually give gave me the opportunity the opportunity. I hope a chance to that'll do. Up a chance to, to feed all the cables down inside the, the hollow space inside the the fireplace. Down here and then I took the scutting board off, ran the cables in behind the scutting board and I drilled a hole down the bottom corner of the this cabinet, which you can't see it's in the inside of the cabinet. And this was my first A V cabinet if you want to call it. It's my only A V cabinet actually. I'm kinda of making it sound as if I've done loads, but I, I love this thing and see if if I had the chance to do anything less in any other house, I would do it. Um, it was just so good having everything closed away like that. Um, didn't have a TV stand or anything like that. Everything was up in the wall and it just gave us loads and loads of floor space. Um, that's the same AV receiver and the same gear as before. Although the, the Xbox has changed. I think that was the Xbox 360 Slim. Must have gave my kids and mother one and I had a wee upgrade. But you can notice that the PC is different. Decided to change the, the PC case. Um, I think the other one was too deep, it didn't fit in this. So, this case was obviously not as deep, but higher and not as wide either. But um, it basically fit inside this cabinet absolutely perfect. The only bad thing about it was the way it was it's orientated, all the cables all came out of the side. But that case was the Lie, the, sorry, Lantec, I was going to say Lantec there, it was the Lee and Lee V. 350B um, and on the front there you can also see which is the, the Antec Veris Elite Multimedia Station I added that into this as well as well as a, a DVD burner oh, that may have, was that Blu-ray at that stage? no, it would have been DVD but uh, this thing actually came with a remote control and it allowed me to control a whole entire PC with a remote control didn't ever have to open these doors for anything at all apart from using the disk drive and so on um, but yeah, that, that ultimately became my uh, my home theatre PC. Um, I think that is the end of the scores. So, during that whole time, I basically played games purely on a, a laptop, which was the, the MSI GS60 Ghost Pro. I paid a ridiculous amount of money for that laptop, but I've, again, I've still got that to this day. It was a bit of a powerhouse and it still actually runs some games no bad um this very day but it's not ideal sitting on a laptop on the arm of a chair or on your knees or something and you're trying to find somewhere to plug a mouse in and, and use that as a got an invader you can go away she'll just keep annoying me um bye so it wasn't ideal trying to play games in this laptop so try to think what happened after that we eventually moved into another house the whole pc gaming Kind of took a bit of a back seat again. Um, we were only in that other house for about a year or something like that, and then we decided to move again. We weren't happy with where we were. At this point, it was my son who kind of became the bit of the, the PC gamer. He he asked me for a PC, and we we got him one for his his birthday or Santa got him one for his Christmas, I think it was, and it was just a a cheap thing. Came with a a monitor keyboard and mouse it was one of these package things that we bought before uh, and you can see that in there um an asus god knows what it was but uh, that was like an amd athlon thing or something like that was in that um just enough for him to to play minecraft and stuff on but he uh he got a bug after that he he kind of basically wanted to start buying stuff as well and building up his own pc and that's that's basically what happened all the focus and attention went on my son's setups, um, and he ended up uh, getting his very first PC case as well. So, case that you're seeing on the screen just now, um, I think it was a Thermotech View 58, if I remember right, the number of it. I can't remember if that's correct off the top of my head, but he specifically picked this one because he liked the idea of the, the glass panel on the side, or plastic, it was actually plastic on the side that curved them in over the top of the case as well so and he bought all the well not bought but he picked all the parts himself really he kind of had an idea of what he wanted to play and we sat down with him for a wee bit and he, he, he decided what he wanted to, to purchase and I'd give him a budget and he started putting his pc together with my help obviously but 
Uh, I just kind of st stood and watched him, and he he added all the motherboard and screwed things in and plugged stuff in. It was just for my guidance. So this was this was his PC that he built. Um, came with these nice Thermaltake ring LED lights. I think a ring ring twelve LED lights. I think they're called. And these are actually addressable, but. For some strange reason, he had this mad fascination about the colour orange at the time, so everything ended up orange, uh, and you'll, you'll see that further on. Um, so we keep getting that. Can't annoy me. And she can go away because she'll just keep crawling all over the desk and in front of the camera. Uh, aye, so there's a picture of the side of the case. All kind of closed off, actually quite a decent looking case. Um, and then he got himself a, a proper desk. The, the desk he was using before was just a kind of chain, kind of wee crappy cheap desk from IKEA. In fact, you've seen it in the previous picture when he was, when he was, uh, when he was in another room. I forgot to mention this house that we moved into had an attic space and we actually kind of decorated it for him. We painted it and everything. Um, it was strange at the time we went with a green and white colour against my wishes. <laughs> um, but yeah, we all decorated it, painted the walls green, left one wall white, and you'll see why later on. We left that white, put some decals and stuff on. Got a nice PC desk again, it was his choice, he specifically wanted this one, and we started building up his PC setup for him. In the corner there, you, you can see a, a 3D printer, and this thing was relatively cheap, and it's absolutely fantastic. I'll, I'll show you some of the stuff it's printed. I've used it more than him, I mean, he, he bought it talking about loads and loads of stuff he was going to make with it and he, he never ever really kind of used it to its potential or to its full but I did <laughs> I was printing all sorts of stuff uh, I we pictured of the case I think at this stage we'd upgraded some of the stuff on it I think we'd got my new processor I think he ended up with an AMD Ryzen 2600X if I remember it right off the top of my head and it came with the, the Wraith Prism cooler and this is the beginning of his his orange steam. Um, we added some LED lights all around the back of his, his desk and it looked pretty good at night. Another picture. Obvious difference here. He got a second monitor. This must have been not, not too long after his birthday because I remember him specifically asking for a second monitor. So he basically got the same monitor uh, as he had before. So two identical monitors. Uh, and that was... Rocat keyboard that he, he purchased again. I think he got it for his birthday. Can't remember the model of it. Coney, I think actually, it was a Coney keyboard or Coney mouse, one of the two anyway. But it was both a, a Rocat mouse and Rocat Rocat keyboard. Then um, again, caught his eye and he asked if he could get it. So, so you can see his his little PC build up our setups coming along nicely. A little front picture of the the case with the the ring LED lights. And it was, a, it was a really, really nice setup he's got, um, or he had, I should say. And this is ultimately what he ended up with. And I've, I've no idea how jealous I was. And this is ultimately what kind of kicked me on to start getting back into building PCs because I was totally, totally jealous of what he had. In his own room himself, had this cracking PC set up in the corner with dual screen monitors, you name it, gaming mouse, gaming keyboard, gaming seat. Um, <laughs> he had a... He's still got this to this day, in fact, he's got a sofa bed for when his mates have stayed over and then he had a projector which was kind of positioned on a, a unit just behind the sofa to play his Xbox on and I can't even remember how big this thing got. We were limited by the throw space because of the, the width of the room and that's as big as it would go but had that wall been much further away he could have had a much bigger screen and it would have been crystal clear. So well, that was a an Optima projector that we bought at the time, a 1080p 3D Optima projector, <coughs> excuse me, and we still have that, but we just can't use it where we are just now, but I'm hoping at some stage we can, we can use it again. Got himself a big sound bar as well, which was a kind of 3D surround sound bar, uh, rather than running cables all around the, the room and having speakers up in the walls, and that, that sounded fantastic as well, and usual stuff, Xbox One there, and the... He also ended up with a Navy receiver because my intention was to give him the 5.1 speakers in there. Just never get around to it. So he ended up with a sound bar. But yeah, totally, totally jealous of what he had and decided that's it. Enough's enough. 
I'm going to get back into building myself a proper gaming PC. And this was it. This was my first gaming PC for a while. Um, had a set up in the dining room. It was the only space I could kind of get to myself. Uh, and I basically kind of went all out putting things together. The case is the Aerocool Aero 1 um, Eclipse. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. Just Aero 1, Aero, Aero Cool Aero 1 Eclipse I. It came with its own addressable RGB fans. Three at the front, one at the back. I think I purchased myself the Ryzen 3700X at this stage. The graphics card was the RTX 2060. Um, the memories, 3200 MHz of uh, Corsair. Dark Vengeance Pro, I think it's called. Um, or Pro Black, Pro Carbon Black. I think that's actually 3200 megahertz, and that's 32 gig. Um, and I'm actually still using that myself to this day. Purchased myself a nice Corsair gaming keyboard. Um, can't remember the model of that one off the top of my head. Corsair gaming mouse, and I bought myself some. Um, Logitech cheapest chips because I think they cost about 30 quid or something like that on a little Ikea desk with Alex drawers I think this is a Linmon tabletop um, if you've never used a Linmon table, table, tabletop it looks solid but it's actually got a honeycomb centre in it so it makes it incredibly light which it's not ideal because it can move about real easy the Acer monitors I'm still using that right at this very moment that's a 240 megahertz monitor um 1080p um sorry megahertz 240 hertz monitor um 1080p and i bought this duronic monitor arm uh, rather than having on a stand i thought i'd put the, the arm on the back of the desk and hopefully it looked a wee bit better than the kind of ugly stands uh and down at the bottom there you should be able to see my HyperX or Cloud 2 headphones. Absolutely love those headphones. And then, must have been nearly, I don't know, about a few months ago I think it was, my son came in and his batteries had ran out uh, on his headset while he was playing his Xbox and he asked if I had a spare headset. I gave him a loan of these, told him to look after him and he had a hissy fit playing some sort of game and snapped a bloody... 3.5 millimeter cable inside these his controller so I was not a happy chappy uh, so that kind of close up the case that was a brilliant case my, my son's actually got that now after I've done more upgrading he he inherited this it's, it's got to be one of the best cases for airflow that I've had it was so good it was just a big mesh panel with the front and behind it had another mesh filter behind the fans for catching all the dust and stuff like that. The top was all mesh as well. And what you can't see just now is there's actually two fans mounted at the top of that. It wasn't it wasn't a deep case, but it was tall, so when you put fans at the top of it, you couldn't see the fans. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to some people. You could see the fans from the top, but um, you couldn't see them from inside unless you ducked your head down and looked up diagonally. So later on, actually... I've done a, a cooler to it, an AIO cooler, um, and you can't see the cooler, which I actually really, really like, but a yeah, brilliant case, and it's still getting used to this day. Close up of the keyboard and the mouse, and again, a close up of the, the HyperX Cloud 2 uh, headset that I used. Uh, then later on, I decided to add these. These are the Corsair LS100 light strips. Um, I done a wee video on that not so long ago. Um, this obviously gives an RGB effect shining onto the back of the wall, but I bought it for like a, an ambulate effect, so that when you're playing games, explosions or whatever going off, you'd, you'd get the flashes and stuff on the wall at the back. Uh, then I decided to upgrade those headphones, or headsets, should say. Nothing wrong with them. The previous ones, I just wanted wireless. Hated having the, the cable dangling and getting snagged on things and just having the, the weight of the cable on it annoying me slightly. So I decided to buy a, a pair of uh, Steel Series Arctis 7 and a, 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 again, I still use these just now. Highly recommend them. Brilliant, brilliant head, uh, headset. Super, super light, super comfortable. Um, it ticks a lot of boxes. 
So uh, yeah, that was the beginning of the the build the build up of my my own PC setup. Started trying to make an effort on cable management. Um, you can buy this cable tray thing, or cable tidy from IKEA. You can put your power the uh, extension cord up there and plug everything in and try and wind all the cables around it just to keep them off the floor and stuff. It's pretty ugly though when you actually do bend down and look at it. It's, you're basically winding all these cables up. It just looks really, really ugly, but at least you can't, you can't see it from... If you're like sitting on a desk or whatever, or standing up, you can't see all these trailing cables, which is the purpose of me buying that. And then that was my next upgrade. This was my 34 inch uh, Iyama uh, G Master gaming monitor. And it's, it's a funny story about this. I actually won two of these. I entered a competition and won this one, and then I entered a completely different competition and won a second one, which my son, uh, I basically gave it, gave it to my son. Um, so talk about lucky, but what a fantastic monitor! And I, again, I still use that to this day. I'm sitting right in the front of me, a uh, thirty-four inch ultra uh, widescreen gaming monitor. One millisecond response team, all, all the usual stuff. Does uh, the G Sync and all that kind of stuff? Fourteen forty P. Is there anything else added into that? Decided to change the. the the kind of theme as well went with a, an all white theme to match the desk at the time with my cool Batman background. Yeah, just from a different angle, different color theme again. You may have noticed now I have different, say, different fans in there. That's the, the Corsair LL120 fans. I decided to upgrade the, the cooler. Uh, and in there you're seeing the H100 Elite Capelix cooler and I bought additional fans so everything was all matching, it was all Corsair I changed the, the colour theme up as well for the, the typical pink and blue or purple and blue whatever you want to call it, you see a lot of people using keyboard and mouse uh, they've changed at a stage I believe uh, aye, that's the keyboard I'm using just now which is a K70 Quickfire, um, low profile, blah 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 blah. <laughs> it's too hard to try to remember all this stuff. Uh, and my new mouse as well, new Corsair mouse I got at the time. And I got rid of the, the old Logitech cheap speakers and to replace them with another set of cheap speakers. But this time I went with the, the Creative Pebble and purely went for them because of the amount of great reviews they're getting and they were really really good. If you're looking for cheap speakers and you've got limited space, I would highly re recommend these. The noise off them is superb. Um, I really, really enjoyed those little speakers. Just different angles. You can actually see what I was talking about with the... Um, because that table's honeycomb, it actually started bowing a little bit in the middle with my weight, me leaning on it, and i am got a habit of leaning, putting my elbow on the desk, the, the, the top of the desk started bowing. Can imagine it'd only be a matter of time before that thing actually snapped. Um, so be warned if you get a Linman tabletop, that could potentially happen. Uh, what's different here? Stacked the monitors. Okay, so the monitors are now stacked. That was the previous monitor I was using. That's at the top, and I got a couple of monitor arms, um, drilled those into the wall, and you can just about see it that there's a cable uh, duct, little cable duct thing stuck to the wall at the back and the cables basically run along the back to the back of the PC so you don't see any cables at all whatsoever hanging down so nice and tidy, nice and neat, quite like to look at that and here's a, another little addition and again I've done a video on a mod that I've done using this but it was a, a little LCD monitor by Elcro 800 by 480 resolution I think this thing is and I bought this as a like a hardware monitor for temperatures and stuff like that. This is the old case it was in, and there was actually a gap between the PSU shroud and the, the glass, and I could actually wedge this little screen in there, so it looked apart. Back to the, the white colours. Uh, kind of kept changing the, the colour scheme, went back and forward, back and forward. Nothing's really changing here, it's just the photos of the colours. And this is me changing it to the the current pc that i have at the moment or current case i should say 
which is my um, uh, Lee and Lee Lankul 2 mesh. Absolutely love this case. Um, I love PC cases in general. I keep watching videos and seeing reviews and I could absolutely go mad on cases, but this thing ticks so many boxes. The, the airflow on it, cooling on it, everything's superb. The little mod I've done, you'll see as well, superb. It's got plenty of space in it for what I need. I find it very, very difficult to buy something else to, to replace it with. Um, there's a new one, Lankul 3, it's out. It's got a kinda, some nice little upgrades and additions, but um, to pay the extra money seems kind of pointless for for what those upgrades are. But yeah, that's, that's my current case. A little picture inside of the, the bits and bobs. I think at this stage when I got the new case, I also got a new graphics card. This is the RTX 2070 Super. It's not a great upgrade in the previous one, which is a 2060. Um, my son ended up taking the 2060 though, so he was he was happy. As you can imagine, he had quite a big upgrade. He went from a, uh, was that a 1060? Can't, can't remember what he had, the graphics card, but anyway, he ended up with the, the RTX 2060. Uh, and then we move on to, that was a little mod I started talking about on the side of the case. Um, so I actually used a little Dremel tool and cut away a, a hole in the side of the mesh. This, this part of the case actually flaps down or can be totally removed. Took it away, cut a hole out and mounted this little screen from the back and then I made a fascia using my son's 3D printer that I showed you earlier on. At the time, the only filament that I had was green filament, and my intention was just to use a green filament and then spray paint it. Um, I did spray paint it and it looked absolutely awful. The finish was crap on it, so I ended up swapping out the filament and got white stuff and decided to make a white one. We bit a white paint on the screws, just to hide the silver of the screws. Excuse me. Um, and this was some of the 3D printed stuff that I was mentioning earlier on. This is my little gaming mo logo. Uh, I actually use this, believe it or not, as a kind of a GPU anti-sag bracket. I used to be able to set it under the corner of the GPU. Um, but yeah, I printed off a few things. As you can see, the little Batman bust as well on the table. Um, and then this is the next, the next big step up. Uh, this is our bedroom in this same house. We actually had a, a huge, huge house, big, big bedroom, and I actually managed to shuffle the furniture around to get, create myself a better space in the bedroom. Got myself a super long tabletop. I think that's is 180 long or 200 long, if I remember off the top of my head. And another set of Alex drawers. You can see some of the other stuff that I started adding in. Um, the monitors are wall mounted again. Uh, I didn't put the cables inside this wall, this is a laughing plaster um, walls, it's an absolute nightmare mounting the, these monitors. So there's a little bit of kind of cable duct runs down behind the monitors and then down behind the, the, the desk itself, so everything was kind of tidy in there. And this is when I kind of experimented with the position of the monitor as well. Um, I've seen a guy who I watch all the time had placed his ultra wide at the bottom at a kind of low angle tilted down like away from me as you can see in them and I, I didn't think it would be good but actually when you're sitting there playing games it's, it's it's an ideal position for your eyes to look down on you also means that the top monitor is a little bit lower as well and it's just it's a wee bit easier on your neck rather than moving your neck up and down trying to look at the monitors uh, what else got added to this you can see i started building up my, camera, my youtube setup that was the beginning of me doing youtube stuff uh, old DSLR camera that I could use that's hooked up in the corner and uh, the Fifine microphone that I'm still using to this day is also clamped onto the desk and then we've got this, I think it's called the Skadis Ikea pegboard um, up in the wall so this was me finally getting to a stage that I was happy with, I loved this setup um, looked fantastic at night different kind of colour theme I decided to use, it was a a teal and gold colour theme and that's all the stuff that was on the SCADIS board my headset uh, my Microsoft Elite Gaming Elite 2 Gaming the game controller my tablet and little kind of ducats for memory cards and stuff and USB USB drives and so on and that was 
probably one of the best cable management cable managements I've done in a long time. I've got these little plastic tray things from Amazon. It comes with like double sided tape, really really strong tape, taped onto the bottom of it, and you can, you can actually just push the cables inside these things. So a lot of the cables are actually doubled up on themselves and tucked away inside this, but I thought I'd done pretty well with the cable management on this. That's the keyboard and mouse I'm still using to this day. And this is just some daft videos that I kind of made at the time, showing you the setups. I'm not going to bore you with these. That's a little printer in work. Thought I would share this with you. Um, I can't remember how long that thing took to make. I actually think it was like a couple hours for it to print that thing off. It's super, super slow. Does it tell you in the front there? In fact, there you go. <laughs> it's nearly four and four and a half hours. Madness. Uh, another video of the setup. This is a video that I took as well of the, the LS100 lights I was talking about on the back of the monitor. So you can see them in action just now and you can see the kind of effect it gives off. And as I mentioned before, I've actually got a recent video and these have reinstalled them on my monitor. And I think that may be us. Uh, that's help. So after that, disaster kind of struck. Um, we basically got forced out of that house against their kind of wishes and at the worst time possible as well at Christmas. It came as a bit of a shock and we basically had to move into a different house, um, which was much smaller. It's kind of still hard to rest day to kind of accept what happened to us. It was horrible timing of it, just couldn't be any worse. Christmas and everything was just around the corner, we'd obviously spent loads and loads of money and then we had to go through this whole upheaval of moving house and downsizing, getting rid of loads and loads of furniture. Um, and basically what happened was I ended up in the bedroom again, uh, but a much, much smaller bedroom and set up in a, a desk like this. Now, if you've kind of started watching me recently, you'll have probably seen quite a lot of this set up, but uh, I had to get a smaller desk top, I think it's 140, 140 centimetres long this one, um, didn't have any space for my PC to go on the top of the desk, so the PC ended up underneath the desk, put it on top of a little stand so that it wasn't like sucking all the dust and stuff, stuff up straight off the floor, uh, obviously lost one of the Alex drawers as well because of that, it gives me enough space to get the, the chair under the, the desk. What did I upgrade? Uh, oh, the speakers. So the speakers, you can see are the Sanyon speakers that I've done a video on as well. Um, budget speakers, but they look the part because they're these nice white bookshelf speakers. Sound no bad too, but they're, they're, no, they're no edifiers or anything like that. But they, for what you pay, they're great speakers. Uh, and Logitech face, sorry, sorry, not Logitech, Elgato face cam camera has been set up here as well now for, for YouTube which I'm using just now, and then I've got this little uh, Raleno, or Raleno, Raleno, however you pronounce it, um, light up the top for when I'm doing YouTube videos. So, yeah, it was, it was a bit horrible. I'd obviously got that big desk all set up, the one in the, the previous house, kind of finally happy with the way things were set. That was just kind of desk I wanted, the size of desk I wanted, the way the monitors and everything were mounted, the cables being all tidy and stuff like that. And then I had to revert back to this, back to a smaller desk and stuff. Um, but it looked, looked good at night still. Put a little LED strip on the back of the desk for a night. Um, same keyboard and mouse I've, as I've had for ages. And I kind of, again, a video of showing you what I had, what I had to deal with. This was took earlier on though, you can still see that I've got the, the Pebble speakers there. They're long gone now. And there is an upgrade to the inside of the PC. I've now got the RTX, um, the RTX 3070 Ti, and my again my son inherited the RTX 2070 Super from me. But I wasn't happy not having that space again. So this is where I'm at now, thankfully. Still the same tabletop, still that 140 long tabletop. But what I did was I got a second set of Alex drawers, and I've actually pushed them out. I think there's about a 12 centimetre overhang, um, or overlap I should say on the top of the Alex Ross. A lot of people are probably thinking that that's dangerous, they could slip, could fall off and st stuff like that. 
um, which they can do, but I've actually got double sided tape, super adhesives, double sided tape under each of these. It's not going to go anywhere at all. And apart from that, the Alex drawers up against one wall and then it's up against a, a chest of drawers on the other side, so they can't really move out anywhere. Uh, or should I say far enough to allow this to drop. But everything, uh, everything's pretty much the same as it was before. Same speakers, PC, nothing, nothing hardware like upgraded. Uh, I managed to get the, the SCADIS pegboard back up in the wall and got all my bits and bobs up there as well, my, my controllers and so on. Uh, Cal obviously loves it, he's, he's always sitting in the chair, likes the lights I think. Uh, and that's the, the cable management under this disc. Um, there's more cables because I've got the telly and stuff like that beside where I'm just now. There's more cables I've had to run around the, basically from connection points in the house um, and I've had, actually had to add some more of these plastic trays in to kind of accommodate extra cables. Then down the bottom here uh, I also done some cable tidying as well. There's there's power cables and stuff going along there and TV aerial cables and stuff running along there as well and I decided to add this, this wee trunk in and actually I think that looks, looks really really good. And there's another picture of the, how the, the cables Look underneath the desk, quite proud of that. Aye, and that's my PC as it is in a moment. Uh, I don't think much has changed from any of the other previous photos. Upgraded the motherboard so I could make use of more M.2 slots at the PCI 4. Uh, and I'm now running a, a 5950X. Uh, processor. No, sorry, not 1550X, I'm talking rubbish. 5900X I'm running. Uh, in this uh, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9. Can't speak. A Ryzen 9, 5900X processor. And again, my son, he gets all my hand hand-me-downs, so he, he inherited the previous processor. I think I told you that earlier on anyway. He got the, the 3700X, um, which was in, I was in more case. And that was a, a video I took as well of the, the LS100 lights being set back up. I put those back on and just give a wee demo video how good that looks. And everything's all in sync because it's all uh, Corsair stuff I've got. Corsair software allows you to kind of sync everything. So it looks looks good if you like that kind of thing. And that's, that's where we are at the moment. That's our final picture. A little kind of wider picture showing you the, the TV. So when I'm gaming and stuff like that, I can also turn the TV on and watch football, which I occasionally enjoy doing. Uh, I think that's us. So that's that. Oh, bit of a kind of strange, strange video, but I just thought I'd kind of show you, show you all my stuff that I've kind of built up through the years. I've kind of came a long way. The early days was pretty, pretty, pretty funny. You can kind of see what I had before and. I'm quite quite proud of what I've got just now. I would love to have my own space, my own room like my boy did, um, and just turn that into a total games room, entertainment room, you name it. Um, I could really, really go to town with the ideas and stuff I've got. Um, but it is what it is. I'm stuck with what I've got just now, but I'm, I'm happy for just now. So that's it. If you're still with me, thanks for watching. It's a bit of a long, dragged out video. Um, Hopefully I can get some content up again soon. As always, leave a like and subscribe if you can. And I'll see you all soon. See you later.